In this video, you'll learn how to write your first post in Beehive. To get started, log into your Beehive account and click on Posts. From here, you can view all of your previous posts and drafts. A post can be published to your Beehive website and or your email list, aka your newsletter. You can click on Start Writing to create a new post instantly, or you can click on the drop-down arrow next to it and click on Use Template to choose from an existing template you've created. We'll cover how to create a template later in this video. Once you start a new blank draft or choose a template, you'll be redirected to the post builder. From here, you'll see five different tabs at the top of the post editor, compose, audience, email, web, and review. These are the five steps you'll go through when creating, configuring, and publishing your post. Compose is where you'll create the contents of your post and is the page we're currently on. On this page, you can add a post thumbnail, content tags, a post title, a subtitle, authors, and the content of your post. You can also view all of your available ad opportunities from the Beehive ad network. You can simply drag and drop any opportunity directly into the editor. And of course, you can hide them at any time. After clicking on add thumbnail, you can click on upload an image to upload an image from your device. After uploading a thumbnail, you'll have the option to show the thumbnail at the top of your web post if you're publishing a specific post to your Beehive website. Simply click on the icon to the left of the thumbnail, click visibility, then toggle on or off show at top of web post. As mentioned before, with Beehive, you can publish to your website as well as your email list. Also, you can click on the thumbnail again at any time and upload a new image replace it from your image library or delete it. It's important to note that any image you upload into the post editor will now appear in your image library. This means if you previously uploaded an image, you won't need to re-upload it again. In the image library, you'll be able to see all of your previously uploaded images and you'll also get access to stock libraries from Giphy and Unsplash. You're free to use images and GIFs from these stock libraries in your own posts. Next, you can add content tags or essentially categorize your post. It's not mandatory to add a content tag, but it is helpful for users who want to filter your posts by specific content tags on your website. For example, if you publish different types of posts, formats, or topics, you can create different content tags for each and your readers can filter your posts by the different tags. If you choose to assign a content tag to your post, you can choose from existing ones you've created, or you can create a content tag directly inside the post editor. Next up, we have authors. If no authors are assigned to a post, you can click on add authors. And if you wanna add an additional author to your post, you can click on the plus icon next to an author. When adding a new author, you'll see two different options. You can add an author or a guest author. If you click on add author, you'll see the names of team members under your Beehive account. If you click on guest author, you can create a profile for people who are not a part of your Beehive team. Lastly, you can add a post title and subtitle. By default, these will show at the top of your email post and they'll also be your email subject line and preview text. However, you can choose to change the email subject line and preview text later if you want. You can also choose to hide the title and subtitle from your emails by clicking on the icon next to them, clicking on visibility, and toggling off show in email. To actually begin writing your post, you can click in the area where it says click here to start writing. Now you can create the content of your post. First off, if you select a piece of text, you'll see a toolbar appear with different styling options with the option to bold, italicize, underline, strike through, and highlight text. You'll also see an option to create a bullet list, block quote, code block, and more from the text you selected. And of course, there's basic options like choosing your font size, colors, and family. You also see a shortcut to our AI editing features, which can help you improve your writing, translate text, fix spelling, grammar, and more. In addition to the toolbar, you'll also find more options by hitting the forward slash key. Here, you'll be able to add specific components to your post. Once you enter this key, you'll see a huge menu full of components that you can add to your post. This includes basic components like images, buttons, code blocks, content breaks, and more, but also more advanced components like subscriber breaks, footnotes, table of contents, and embeds. 
If you're on a paid Beehive plan, you'll also have access to the premium components, which includes the ability to add a referral program block, boosts, and advertisement block, along with access to our AI writing features. Simply click on any of the components from the menu and they'll be instantly added to your post. Depending on the component you've added, you may see additional customization options above the component block. If you wanna save some time in the post editor, you can utilize a ton of shortcuts that are on screen right now. They'll also be in the description of this YouTube video. One cool thing you can do in our editor is easily add emojis. To do this, simply type in a colon and then describe the emoji you wanna add. For example, you can type in colon apple or colon rocket to find those emojis. Now simply click on them and they'll be added directly into your post. Another cool shortcut is command or control F, which allows you to search and replace words or phrases in your posts. You can also find this option in the top right of the editor. Not only can you search for words like usual, but you can also replace a singular instance of a word with another word or replace all instances of a specific word with another word. Just type in the word you want to replace in search and click on replace or replace all. Now that we're done covering shortcuts, let's cover some more advanced topics. Let's start with sections. Sections allow you to group one or more components together. By doing this, you can change how a section or group of components appear. To create a section, you can type in forward slash section and select it from the menu. Now you can move any components into the section. Alternatively, you can also highlight multiple components, hover to the left side of the components, click on the drag icon, and then click on group to section. Now, once you've created a section, you can do a few things. The first thing you can do is change the appearance of the section. If you click on visual settings from the menu, you can change the section spacing, background color, background text color, border thickness, border radius, border style, and border color of the section. This might be helpful if your post contains different types of content or if you wanna make them more visually appealing. On screen right now are different examples of how Beehive users have customized sections to their advantage. In addition to changing the appearance of sections, you can also change the visibility of sections. If you click on the drag icon of a section and then click on visibility, you can limit who sees specific sections of your post. For example, you can limit the visibility of sections to be only shown on your website, email, or both. You may find this even more helpful if you run a free and paid newsletter. With these visibility settings, you can also show specific sections of your post to only free subscribers and or only paid subscribers, even down to specific paid tiers. Just toggle on or off specific visibility settings depending on your preferences. If you wanna show all your content to everyone, you will leave all these options toggled on. Now, if you're wondering how your content will look to your readers, you can click on preview in the top right corner of your screen. Not only is it helpful to see how your posts look in their entirety, you can also get a better understanding of what specific features do. For example, if you toggled on or off any visibility settings like showing your thumbnail at the top of your web post or hiding your title and subtitle from your email, you'll be able to see how they look like. You can click on web to see what your post will look like if you publish it on your Beehive website and you can click on email to see how it appears in the email clients. You can also view how it'll look like on desktop and mobile devices. Additionally, you can simulate what a specific subscriber sees. For example, if you toggled on specific visibility settings targeted towards premium subscribers, you can click on select a subscriber to see their view above the preview and enter their email to see what they would see. This can help ensure you've set up your visibility settings correctly. In addition to previewing your post, you can take it a step further and view a draft of your post before you publish it. You can do this one of two ways. The first way is through a draft link. To access the draft link of a post, click on that drop down arrow next to the preview button, and here you'll see the draft link of a specific post. This draft link allows you to view the latest version of your draft as a web post without having to publish your post first. This is helpful if you want to share a post with team members or friends and family. If at any point you want to change the draft link, you can click on reset link, which will change the draft link. Another way you can preview your post before publishing is with test emails. Test emails allow you to send yourself or others a test draft of your post to their email address. This test email will only be sent to the email addresses that are checked under send test email and any other ones you've entered in the text box underneath it. Similar to the preview, you can simulate a subscriber's view by entering their email address under simulated subscriber. 
Once you've selected the emails you want to send your test email to, you can click on send test email. If you're working with other team members, there are a couple of features that you may find helpful. First of all, there's collaborative editing. This means you and other team members can edit a post at the same time. And even better, you'll be able to view who is currently editing a post and where. You'll see an indicator in the editor itself, and you'll be able to see changes happen in real time. You'll also see the initials of team members who are currently editing a post at the top of the post editor. Next, there are comments. In the post editor, you can highlight a piece of text or section and leave a comment for other team members to see. To leave a comment, you can highlight a piece of text or a section and click on the comment icon in the toolbar. After you click on it, you can leave a comment and once submitted, it'll appear next to the thing you highlighted. You can even tag other team members by typing the at symbol and selecting their name from the drop-down menu. They'll receive a notification once you do this. In the top right corner of the editor, you'll also see an additional comments icon, allowing you to view all open and resolved comments. And lastly, there's version history. Version history allows you to view previous instances of your posts and allows you to restore them if you want. This is helpful if you want to see changes your team members have made while you were gone. Or even if you don't have team members, this is a super helpful feature. To locate a post version history, you can find the icon in the top right corner of your screen next to the comments icon. Here you can preview the different versions of a post and hit restore in the bottom right if you want. Once you're editing a post, you'll be able to see if your edits are being saved. For drafts, aka posts you haven't published yet, your changes will automatically be saved and you'll see one of four statuses with a corresponding color. If you hover over this indicator, you'll be able to view what each of these statuses mean. To the left of the status, you'll also see draft or published. This will tell you whether the current post you're editing has been published or not. By default, drafts are auto-saved while already published posts require you to click update web in the top right corner to update your changes. The last thing we'll cover regarding the post editor is creating, saving, and using templates. As mentioned in the beginning of the tutorial, you can start your post from a blank draft or choose an existing template. To create a template, you can find the template icon in the top right corner of the post editor. Once you give the template a name and click on save template, you'll find it in the available list of options when you click use template when creating a post. Now that we've covered the post editor and compose tab, let's cover the audience, email, and web settings. Now that you're done writing your post, you can now click on the audience tab at the top of your post, or you can click on next in the top right corner of your screen. From here, you can choose to publish your post to your Beehive website, to your email subscribers, or both. Depending on what you select, you'll see the summary on the right-hand side of your screen change. It's important to reference the summary to ensure you're sending a post to the correct audience. After you're done choosing, hit next and you can specify your audience further. Your email audience is who will be receiving your post via email. Under email audience, you'll have an option to choose a default audience. A default audience includes all your free subscribers, all your paid subscribers, or a specific paid tier. You can choose to send your post via email to all of them or just a handful. Underneath it, you'll see an option to include or exclude segments. This is helpful if you don't want a post to be sent to your entire list of email subscribers. For example, you can remove your default audience and send your post to a specific segment of subscribers by selecting a segment from included segments. Or you can keep your default audience and exclude a segment of subscribers from receiving it by selecting a segment from excluded segments. Depending on what you do, the summary will reflect the changes. Now hit next and you can do something similar with your web audience. Your web audience is who can view your post on your Beehive website. Similar to email audience, you can choose a default audience and once you're done, you can hit continue. Now we're in the email tab where we can configure the settings of the email post we'll be sending out. First off, we can enter a subject line and preview text. This is what subscribers will see in their email client. By default, this will be the same as the post title and subtitle you set earlier, but you can change it if you want. You can also test four different subject lines to maximize the open rate of your email by toggling on A-B test. After toggling on A-B test, you can enter additional subject lines and set the criteria for the A-B test. This includes how long the A-B test will run for and how big of a sample size the test will be sent to. Essentially, your email, all with different subject lines, will be sent to the sample size and after the test period, 
the winning subject line will be sent to the rest of your email list. You can later click on post in the post tab of Beehive and then click on A-B test to see the results of an A-B test. Next, we have email header buttons. These buttons allow your readers to share, like, and comment on your email directly from the email itself. If you toggle on socials, the readers will be able to click on social share icons from your email and share your posts to their followers. If you toggle on likes and comments, readers will be able to leave a like and comment on the web version of your post. Lastly, we can change the custom read online URL. By default, there's a read online link at the top of your emails that will lead to the web version of your post. You can essentially override this link and redirect it to a different site instead. This is really only applicable if you're publishing your web posts on a non Beehive hosted website. After you're done, hit next. Now we're in the web tab where you can change the settings of the web version of your post. First off, you can customize the post URL of your post. Next, you can configure the advanced email capture settings. This allows you to show readers an email capture form while they're reading. If you select gated, readers will need to subscribe to your publication in order to read the post. If you select pop-up, readers will see a subscribe form pop-up while they're reading, but they'll be able to close it. Or you can choose none, which will not ask readers to subscribe at all. Next, we have audio newsletter. By toggling on audio newsletter, your post will automatically be transcribed and converted to audio. Readers will see a listed online option at the top of their email and an audio embed will be displayed at the top of your web post. Tired of reading? Click listen online at the top of the post and enjoy our brand new audio newsletter feature. You can choose from tons of different voices and even preview how they sound like by hovering over the different options and selecting on the sound icon. Now we have the SEO settings. By default, these will be pre-filled with your post title and subtitle, but you have the option to change it. These settings will affect how your post appears in search results and search engines like Google and Bing. You can also change how your web post appears on Facebook, LinkedIn, and X by entering a meta title and description. You can see a preview of what they'll look like beneath the different options. Next, we have post visibility. These options allow you to change how the post will appear on your website. If you toggle on hide the post from feed, your web post will not be visible on your website. If you toggle on feature the post, your post will be displayed at the front of your website's homepage. Lastly, we have an advanced setting that allows you to customize the display date of your post. By default, the date that appears next to your post on your website will be the date you publish the post. What this setting allows you to do is override this date. Essentially, if you wanna change the date that appears next to a post, you can do it here. Once you're done, hit next. Now we're in the review tab. Here you can review and publish your post. First, you'll be able to see who will be receiving your post and how many people. If you're running an A-B test, you can also view the details of your A-B test here. And lastly, in schedule, you can choose to schedule your post by clicking on schedule later or publish it immediately by clicking on publish now. If you're scheduling a post, we provide you with a chart that displays when your subscribers are most likely to open your emails and provide you with a time when your subscribers are most engaged. When you're ready to publish or schedule, you can click on review, then publish or schedule. Once you've scheduled or published a post, you'll see a confirmation that your post is live or scheduled, and you'll see an option to share the web link or directly post to different social media platforms. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to check the other tutorials on our YouTube channel.